morning everybody today i'm going to show you how to do a wet in wet uh, sky water with a heron in it and a sun uh, coming through i'm going to show you a technique on how to lift out a sun um, so you're going to need some masking fluid now i've got some colored masking fluid here from terry harrison i got this from the saa magazine masking fluid now this is just simply for you to reserve um, sorry preserve your um, white areas on your watercolor so this heron here is white so I've blocked him out using this stuff so this is masking fluid it doesn't it sometimes comes colored like this like this blue one here um, but generally is like a creamy color you can get it from most art shops and places like the range um, and you have to, it's like a gum-based uh, liquid. So you have to use either a special masking fluid brush. Now this is a brush that doesn't get all clogged up with the liquid after you've used it because basically this turns into almost like a gum. So you can either use a masking fluid brush or you can use the end of a cotton bud or something that isn't hairy don't use your watercolor brushes um, you can use the end of a feather the tip of a feather or just a, a, a piece of rolled up paper would do it as well you just need something with a point and you literally just dip it in the masking fluid and then you paint it over the area that's white that you want to preserve so um Try and get hold of some if you can. I mean, you can carefully paint around this bird or you can, once you finish the watercolour, you can actually cover, um, colour it in almost with white gouache or acrylic if you haven't got any masking fluid. But you'll see that this makes painting in a wet in wet surface much easier than if you didn't have that area covered. When you've painted it on, leave it to dry thoroughly. Don't work on top of it if it's still wet it won't work okay so what we're going to do is we're going to paint a sort of orangey yellow um, surface on the sky and on the water so first of all you need to wet your colors down so i'm going to take a, a brush and i'm going to wet down oh i've got some orange here already from a previous tutorial so I use that I've got some red here already so I'll use that as well I'm just going to go into my orange wet it down a bit wash my brush off in between wet the yellow down brush off in between a bit of red I should not I shouldn't need any other colors than that for the moment so I'm going to take a uh, square brush or a mop brush or a flat wash brush, as this is called. You could use a Chinese brush um, and just nice clean water and just put that across your painting like this all the way down to the bottom. Like so, not too, not dripping wet but you need it to be wet and it's quite warm we've had some beautiful weather lately um, so you do need a fair amount of water on there then take up a, a, a medium uh, round brush and go into the lightest tone first and that tone is the yellow so i'm just going to put in and i'm just going to dot it around as if it's like cloudy now from here downwards is the water. So I'm going to change the direction. I'm just going to put in a slightly, I started at the top so that the stronger pigment went there. Whereas as we come down here, it's slightly getting thinner and thinner, which is what you're after. Okay, into the orange, put a bit of orange in, just to give it a little bit of extra color. Just going to put a bit of orange along the edge and then we're into the water again so again you just need it to be slightly paler 
However, in the foreground, it should be slightly stronger. So in the foreground of the water and in the foreground of the sky, so that's the sky that's nearest to you and the water that's nearest to you, the pigment strength should be stronger. So in with a bit of red, just for a bit of drama. Now that would be at the top there. So we just put a bit of red there. Oh, that's nice. Remember to replicate it more or less in the same place in the water. I'm just going to put a stripe across there. And again, try get it in more or less the same place in the water. Okay, that'll do. Now, just tip it about a bit. And what that'll do is it'll soften those edges up. Whichever way you tip it, it'll drag. Can you see that? And it's softening as you go, which is rather lovely. You soften to your taste. Okay, so at this stage we need to start thinking about our trees. Now we've got some trees. We're going to have one tree here and one tree here and we're going to have them in the water also. So I want to have those a little bit blurry. So to do that you need to put them in while the paper is still a little bit dry, um, wet. So take a bit of brown colour or anything that you've got in your palette that's sort of dirty. I tend to do this a lot because the stuff that's on the palette has been used for previous paintings and you might as well use it. So imagine that the Right, the edge of the water and the land touches about here and you've got some trees coming upwards. Now that on the tops of those trees there's going to be some foliage. So we're just going to put in a few dots of this sort of brown dirty colour that I've... one there and one here. Now try not to form lollipops as such. You'll see what I mean when the when the um, picture's completed. And can you see that because it's wet, it's spreading out really nicely. So I'm gonna do the same in the water, just here. So there's a bit of a gap where the trunk comes down. It hits the edge of the water and then the trunk is coming down again. Now the trunk in the water would be slightly elongated so again a bit of a gap and behind our heron we've got the other tree like so bit of a gap and there's the other for the foliage on the other tree you can be a bit looser in the water because obviously the water spreads out the reflection so you can really sort of let it happen, let the sort of magic of the watercolour happen. Now I've got a bit slightly bit of dark, now this has dried off a touch now so it shouldn't spread as much as it did with the initial brown tone. So I'm just going to put in a few darker patches, just loosely. Can you see how loose I'm going in with this? Really sort of nervous hand like that couple of trees same in the water just a touch maybe slightly wetter oops not that wet into the water behind the heron again but you need to work quickly because you don't want really defined marks that'll do for now so I'm going to let that dry off however if you have got a hair dryer just dry it off manually. Gen gently, so. You can see how, th how that has softened now. So I'm going to, um, I was going to show you how to lift off a sun 
um, but I've forgotten to do it. So I'm going to paint in the sun now. So I'll show you that in another exercise. Um, the sun is coming from just behind this tree. So I'm just going to paint in the sun like so. And I'm going to put it in the same place in the water, but upside down, obviously. Ooh. I'm going to have it showing a bit more, actually. I should put that in the wrong place. Right, OK. So a little bit of water and just fill that sun in a little bit. Like that. There we go. Take your big brush, clean, slightly damp, and just soften, soften that in, and have a few lines. Can you see how the broken edges of the of the brush? I'm just going to spread that sun out a bit, like that. Again, clean your brush off, dry it off on a paper towel, and just soften in those edges around it, like that. You can even drag up or out some lines like this. from the edge obviously in the water just spread them out a bit more there you go we've got the sun so I'm just going to put in now some more defined uh, foliage so again because this is dry this will look different now and if you want to do it in green you can loose marks just using that brown tone again drag it out, soften some of the marks up, hard, leave some of them hard, just nervous hand, like so. So we've got the soft undertone of the wet in wet marks that we've made and the slightly harder marks of the wet on dry tone that, that we've made using the brown and again with the ones in the water just make them slightly softer They're like little mini explosions these marks and you can see how easy it is to work over that heron slightly softer in the water but a reflection or a shadow is always darker nearer the object. Right, so we've got our puffy trees in. Now we're going to just put in some trunks. So we've got a little bit of brown mixed up and I'm just going to drag a tree trunk down. I'm just using a fine brush here, fine rounded brush. And I'm going to take some of the branches up into that wet foliage that I've created, like so. Same on this side. Just go in loosely to begin with. And we're looking for a sort of a very fuzzy result. We don't want anything too defined. It's supposed to be a nice, soft, hazy day. So again, down from the tree trunk, slightly more water in the ones that are in the water. So again, just take some of those lines down. Tree trunk, remember in the water it's opposite. Like that, tree trunk. So 
some of the lines like that, some of the branches like so. Then uh, we're going to put some land in. So we're going to put the land above. So we're going to go all the way across that line there. And we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to create some bushes. Now, if your brush is too small, take a slightly larger brush. Slightly larger and rounder so that you can cover the area quicker. Same here. So some bushes like that. And then we're going to use the smaller brush again just to flick up because it's got quite a nice point on it. We're just going to flick up some sort of spiky bits. They'll just sort of make you think of grassy, marshy areas. So again, if you want to darken the brown, just add some more brown in or even some different colours, it's up to you, like so. And then we're going to take the brush, thin that colour down a bit, and we're going to put the same thing in the water, but only roughly. So where it comes down, I've left a slight gap underneath in areas between the water edge and the reflection. You can also with this flick downwards just so that you get a few of those reflections in the water. You can even put some line going across if you want to do that. So you can see the reflection coming forward now. So now I want to put, I'm just going to put a little bit more colour in those trees above the water. My brush head just fell off. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more brown and I'm going to put a touch of green in it. Just a touch. And because the sun is behind the trees, just going to put in a little bit of green just on the edges just to lift it just a touch just a little bit of color but like I said just be careful that you don't create these sort of lollipop shapes and again on the same side but in the water like so Okay, now the heron is sitting on a slightly raised area of land in the water. So, a couple of lines through him like that. And then give one of the lines a little bit of depth and also flick up some. Now, have I got slightly finer? You can do this with um, a rigger brush or a fan brush and just put in, because he's closer to us, just put in some more defined marks like that. Even some bulrush type um, things would be good. Well, with the bulrushes, you could just put a little sort of mark. He's, he's a long way away from us, so you don't want any too much detail in that in that foreground area. And off the um, marshy bits, you would find that there would be some ripples. So just put in, using the same colours that are in the sky, and on the land, just put in a few very thin marks, like so. Just to suggest the odd bit of movement on that water. You can also do the same with the trees, is just drag out a 
couple of marks coming across like so. The marks should be much thinner in the distance and thicker and more defined in the foreground like so. Okay, so we're just going to quickly dry this off again. Right, that's nice and dry. So I just want to point this out. There's a little blue, what they call a bloom here, or even a cauliflower. This is where dry paint, um, uh, wet paint has hit dry paper. Now, to get rid of this, all you need is a clean brush, and it needs to be dried off slightly. So it's not soaking wet, and you just literally just touch the edge of that little mark. Now you might like the mark, so if you like it, just leave it alone. Keep cleaning off your brush and drying it off on your paper towel. Just, what all you're doing is, you're lifting off the top layer of pigment that has been left behind by that mark. So like I said, just touch it up. You can drag it across. You can just literally just lift it out. And it takes a little bit of time and a bit of effort, but sooner or later that mark will disappear. Don't overwork it. Do a little bit and then see how it looks once it's dry. It's, it's difficult to see it when it's not dry, that it's worked or not. So do a little bit like I've done there, let it dry off and then touch it up. But you can see that that bit has now disappeared. So the, la the final bit is to remove the heron. So you take your finger and you gently rub that. And you can see it's just gently now peeling off and you see how beautifully that worked okay and for the heron all we need is a little bit of dark pigment for his legs make sure you've got a nice thin brush for this test out your brush before you use it just to see if it's thin enough and you need to have a brush that is not too wet and nice and thin so test it out you can test it out on the side here just see how thin the line is that it leaves behind and if it leaves behind a thin line then you can go ahead and put your legs in so if you feel like you need to put in a mark with a pencil before you touch this then do so so we've got one leg there and one leg there. You can even put it in with a pencil if you'd, if you'd rather. Try not to use a pen. You'll never find a pen that's thin enough to do those marks. And a beak. So again, you need a steady hand for this. Put in a mark with a pencil if you feel that your hand is not steady enough for this job. I'm gonna leave that, that looks lovely. Right, so I'm gonna put slightly wash brush off, bit of dirty paint. I'm just gonna put the suggestion of a wing, maybe a bit darker than that, a wing on him. So like that. Um, a little bit of a shadow just under his cheek and along the inside of his neck. Can you see that? Like that. And then you need a small, the smallest of dots for an eye. And again, your hand is not steady enough. I think they also have a slight, slight sort of feathery bit on the back of their heads. 
So I'm just going to put in a little mark there as well. Right, where he's standing, he needs a mark because obviously he's creating some ripples, even though he's trying to stay as still as possible because he's probably hunting for frogs and fish. But just put in the suggestion of a shadow coming off the bottom of his legs. Right, so there we go. Lovely little heron in a wet and wet uh, sky and water. I'm going to just peel this off so you can see it without the masking tape on it. You can add more detail in if you fancy it. If you want to put more reeds on, more trees, a few clouds in the sky, then please do so. Oop. Be careful with this masking tape. It does, if it's a bit over sticky, it will bring up some of your paper. There we go. Okay, enjoy. Have a go, send me some pictures, subscribe, comment, ask me questions and I will see you again. Thanks for watching.